My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 112. 112. Day 3112. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 112. We are at the topic of we are on the topic of probability, and today is our twelfth video, twelfth lesson in the series of fifteen. After today, we'll have three more before you finish this topic and move on to the next topic. This problem that you're that you're looking at on the blackboard, as this indicates here, it is not in the book. Don't try to look for it. A similar problem, however, a very similar problem, however, exists, and the problem is number thirteen. A similar problem, similar to the, this problem that you see here, is similar. To the problem number 13 that you will find on page number 321. So after we finish this problem, it will be a good idea for you to try to do number 13 yourself because soon we'll get there. So it's similar to problem number 13 on page number 321 and this problem that you see on the blackboard actually is very similar to how the problem used to exist in the previous edition. On the first edition and the second edition, the problem that appeared in this location as, as problem number 13 in the first edition and second edition look very very similar to this one, exact similar setup. But in the, in the third edition they moved on and the numbers that they're giving the, in that problem, problem number 13, I don't like the numbers, somebody did not do a very good job, I don't, I don't like it, it's not a very well written problem. And they're talking about people living on campus and off campus, which is not an issue, but the, pro the point here is that the numbers that they're giving us, they're not the sort of numbers you will see in the real GRE. Because the purpose in the real GRE is not to see how fast you can crunch the numbers, is simply to see how well you understand the concept. And whoever wrote this problem, in my opinion, has done a horrendous job. I'm talking about problem number 13 right now, and one that appears in the book. Anyway, let's read this problem. It says, 66 students, 66 students took a part in an experiment. We are told that 66 students took part in the experiment. If you were to add up all these people, these are males. All, if you add up all the males and all the females, they, they should add up to 66. Let's see. 6 plus 14 is 20, that's 30. And if that's 30, and if the total we are told is 66, then this better add up to 36. Let's see if it adds, adds up to 36 or not. 12 plus 8 is 20, 20 plus 10 is 30, there you go, 36. So, there are 66. Distribution of students is as follows. 66 students took part in an experiment. The distribution of students is as follows. Right here, males and females. We have 6 freshmen. Six male freshmen, eight female freshmen, male, female, freshman, sophomore, and junior. Freshman, sophomore, and junior. Six, ten, fourteen, eight, twelve, sixteen. If that's the case, question is: if one student is picked, if one student is picked at random, what are the odds that the students that is picked is? And there are four parts to this problem. And I would like you to do all four of those parts yourself. And after after I finish reading it, I'm going to give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video as usual. And I would like you to do all of these part, four parts yourself. And after you have done so, then you can resume the video and compare your work against the work that we will do together. Okay? So here's part one. What are the odds that the student that you pick at random among these 66 students is not a junior? What are the odds that he or she, the student that is picked, is either a male or a sophomore? Male or a sophomore. It's an or, not and. Male or a sophomore. What are the odds that the person that you picked is a female freshman or a male junior? What are the odds that the students that you picked at random is not a female junior? I'll give you five seconds, as I said before, for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Pause the video, do the problems, all four of them yourself, okay? All right, let's get going. The well, first part is very simple, not a junior. Well, how many juniors do we have? Since we already have the problem, I'm going to raise the top part because we need the room. So that part, top part is gone. Remember, there were 66 of them. Actually, we don't have to remember. It's right there. There are 66 students. And the question is, what are the odds that if you were to pick one student among these 66 students, that the student that we picked is not a junior? Well, the probability of somebody who is 
not a junior, with the bar on the top means not a junior, this would mean the probability, probability of picking a junior. J for junior. Therefore, therefore, if you put a bar on top of it, it means not a junior, not a junior. The odds of picking somebody who is not a junior, well, let's first let's find out how many juniors do we have. We have right here. We have four, 10, 20, 30. We have 30 juniors. We have 30 juniors. Therefore, the probability of picking a junior is simply 30 out of 66. And therefore, the probability of picking somebody who is not a junior is simply 1, 60, 1 which is 66 over 30, 66. 1, which is 66 over 36, minus 30 over 30, 30 over 66. That's all. Or if you like, if you want to show the work, it is simply 1 minus the probability of picking a junior, which is, which is simply 66 over 66, minus 30 over 66, because there are 30 juniors. 66 minus 30 is going to be 36, 36 over 66. If you divide top and bottom by 6, if you divide top and bottom by 6, it ends up 36 divided by 6 is 6, and 66 divided by 6, 6 is 11. There we go. The answer is 6 out of 11 chances. 6 out of 11 chances. That's part A. Let's move on to part B. Part B says, what are the odds that we pick somebody who is a male or a sophomore. So probability of picking either a male or a sophomore. So we are using letter M for male, F for female. We're going to use, oh, freshman is going to give us a problem, isn't it? Well, we'll worry about freshman when we get to it. Here's the female freshman. We'll worry about it. We'll have to think of a new symbol for freshman because we can have F for both of them. So we'll just use FR. S for sophomore and J for junior. M for female, F for, ju F for female. M for male, F for female. So what are the odds that we pick somebody who is either a male or a sophomore? Here you will see that the two events are not going to be exclusive. Two events are not going to be exclusive. In other words, it is possible, it is possible that you pick somebody at random. It's like rolling a dice. We talked about it a long time ago. On day number, on day number, 3091 I believe or even earlier, later on oh I think it was 1000 and the very first video that we did on the series of probability which was 101 the very first video that we did in the, uh, on, 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 on the on the topic of probability because there are 15 videos as I said today is the 12th video 112 in the series of 15 the very first video that we did, 3101, on day, on that day we talked about the concept of mutual exclusivity. Here, these two events are not mutually exclusive. In other words, it is possible that we pick one person at random and that person happens to belong to both of these sets. That person happens to be such that he is the male as well as a sophomore. Of course it's possible. The events are not mutually exclusive. Even though we don't need to do some work, it's very simple, but I'm going to show you the work just so you understand it so that in a case of complicated problem, we can follow the steps. So here is how it is. Here is how it, if you have to show the work, this is how it goes. It is equal to the probability of picking a male plus the probability of picking somebody who is a sophomore minus the probability of somebody who is a male and a sophomore. So those are the ones who are going to be double counted. Those are the ones who are going to be double counted. Let's erase all of this thing so that we can have some room. Let's, let's put it on the top here. Those are the ones who are going to be double counted. We, we are done with all of this thing. For example, if you were to show this thing in the context of set theory, so the first set is set M, which shows all the male. How many males do we have? Well, 30 of them, right here. There are 30 males. And how many sophomores do we have? Well, we have 22 sophomores. We have 22 sophomores. But as you can see, these two events are not, this, this, is, this is set S for sophomores. But as you can see, these two events are not mutually exclusive. How do we know they are not mutually exclusive? But the way it's, they're drawn, they overlap each other, they have something in common. Something in common are the people who are who possess both of these characteristics, which is people who are male, people who are male, as well as sophomore. These ten people here, these ten people happen to be 
both sophomores, they are counted first as sophomores and then they count it as males. These 10 people are counted twice. They possess both of these characteristics. They go in the middle and as soon as they go in the middle, you have to take away 10 from here because these 30 included this 10, uh, 10. So now this is how the Venn diagram looks like. But this is what is known as, this is what we learned on day number 91, 3091, on day number 3091, this is what is known as uh, ex in inclusive, inclusive, exclusive principle. An inclusive, exclusive principle is just a very fancy way, a very annoying way of, of saying that you must include everything that belongs there, we must include all the people who are male, we must include all the people who are sophomore, and then we must exclude, we must exclude every, any, anybody, anything that is counted twice, anything that is double counted. The, the things, the members, the elements that are double counted are the ones who possess both of these qualities. And there are some elements who are going to possess both of these qualities here because the sets are overlapping. There are 10 such people. We're going to have to subtract that. So let's do it out. First we'll do it in this annoying way and then we'll do it in a straightforward way in a second. So what are the odds of picking somebody who is a male? What are the odds of picking somebody who is a male? Right here are the males, there are 30 of them. 30 out of 66. What are the odds of picking somebody who is a sophomore? There are 22 such people. 22 out of 66. And now, we have to subtract people who possess both of these characters, a male and a sophomore, and there are 10 such people. Right here. And that should give us our answer. 30 minus 10 is 20. 30 minus 10 is 20. 20 plus 22 is going to be 42. 42 over over sixty six and we can reduce it if you like. Let's divide top and bottom by two, we end up with twenty two over thirty three. Oh it goes even more. Let's divide top and bottom by eleven and we'll end up with two third. Oh the odds are two third. Odds are two third. So this is more formal way of doing it, doing this thing, or we can simply Look at the chart and ask ourselves how many people are male or sophomore. These are the male, oh sorry, these are the male here, there are 30 of them, these are the sophomore and realize the 10 of them are double counted, so it's just 10 plus 22 minus 10, it's the same exact thing. Do you understand? Same exact thing. So that was number, although in my work I have a different answer, I have, I have two thirds on the blackboard, Oh, geez. Yes, it is two third. 42 over 66. Ah, 42 divided by 2 is not 22. It's wrong. First, I divided, first we divided top and bottom by 2. 42 divided by 2 is 21. So the answer that I had in my notes actually was the correct answer 21 over 33. 21 over 33, this is wrong. 21 over 33 which can be written as 3 times 7 over 3 times 11 and now 3 are going to cancel out and the answer that I have in my notes is 7 11 7 11 and now it agrees with from the blackboard what I have here I had made a mistake let's do part C what was part C I forget A female freshman, a female freshman, or a male junior. Female freshman or male junior. And we're going to set it up just like this here and we'll see what happens. So here we go. So the odds are going to be female freshman. So here we go. Female freshman. Oh. Freshman Freshman, let's put freshman for FR for freshman. That's female freshman or a male junior. That's what we're looking for. We're gonna set it up just like this and see what happens. What do you think is going to happen in terms of exclusivity? What is our inclusive exclusive principle going to tell us here? Well, let's find out, okay? So that probability is same as probability of choosing a female freshman 
plus the probability of choosing a male junior minus the probability minus minus the probability of choosing somebody who is a fresh female freshman and a male junior. There you go. Because I didn't have the room there to write in one line. What do you notice? What we notice here is that here in this in this in this uh, part the two sets are mutually exclusive. Two sets have nothing in common. There are no elements. There, is, there are no elements that possess both of these characteristics. Because if you were to pick one person at random, first of all, a person is going to be either male or a female. So that's one problem. The second is that we can you can't pick a person and say, well, yeah, this person is a male and a female. Secondly, if you pick a person at random, a person is going to be either a freshman or a junior. You cannot be both a freshman and a junior. So it's impossible to find a person who belongs to both sets. Since there are no elements that belongs to both sets, we cannot draw it like this. There is no overlapping element here. There is no overlapping uh, members here. So these are, if you were to draw them, they are simply going to be disjointed. Disjointed sets. This first set here is a female freshman. And this set is the male juniors, and that's all it is. And there are nobody, there is nobody who possesses both of these qualities. So in other words, in other words, when the two events, when the two sets are mutually exclusive, when the two events are mutually exclusive, then this quantity is zero. We simply add up to obviously that's what it is. Uh, we didn't have to do all of this thing, it's just to understand it. How many freshmen? How many female freshmen do we have? Let's erase this thing from the previous part. How many? How many female freshmen do we have? Female, female freshmen. Female freshmen, I, we see eight of them. So that's eight out of 66 because there were 66 altogether. How many male junior? Male, male, junior. Right here, there are 14 of them. And then minus, minus what you see here. Minus a big fat zero. Minus a zero, there you go. Because that quantity is zero. Let me write this down a little bit lower. But the question is, how do you determine uh, whether the two events are mutually exclusive or not? Well, there are only two ways. One way in the exam is going to be is is, is going to be that, the, is that that the nature of the problem that they will give you, that the nature, the very nature of the problem that the, that appears in the exam, uh, will make it quite clear without any ambiguity, without any shadow of doubt, that uh, these two events are mutually exclusive. Like here. You cannot pick a student and that student just happens to be at the same time a freshman and a sophomore. Obviously, it's either freshman or sophomore. And uh, you pick somebody at random, it's going to be either a boy or a girl. You understand? We, can, we live in a simple world here. Do you understand? So, either the nature of the problem will make it quite clear that it's either one or the other, or if it is not clear, then they will tell you, ex ex uh, that they will tell you uh, outright, they will tell you out loud, they will tell you the problem is, will state itself that these two events are mutually exclusive. But if they don't tell you that, we cannot assume that. They have to either tell you that, or the nature of the problem has to be such that it makes it very clear that they are mutually exclusive. Here, they are mutually exclusive, and therefore this quantity is zero. That's it, we are done. 14 plus, 14 plus 6 would have been 20, so it's going to be 22 over 66. 22 over 66. And now we're going to have, if you divide up and divide by 11, you're going to end up with 2 over 6. Oh, this is just one third. Of course it's one third. 22 is 3 times 66. What the hell is the matter with me? The answer is one third. That was part C. Let's look at part D. Not, not a female, not a female junior. Not a female junior. What are the odds of picking somebody who is not a female junior? Thank you.
Well, the odds of picking somebody who is not a female junior is simply 1 minus the odds of picking somebody who is a female junior. Who, who is in fact a female junior and how many female junior do we see here? Well, let's see. First of all, we need a female, so we need to stay down here and we need to be looking for juniors. Right here, there are 16 of them. There are 16 such people. So it is simply going to be, we need, we need to erase this part here. It is simply going to be 1, which is same as 66 over 66, minus not a female junior, just 1 minus number of people who are female junior, female junior, there are 16 of them, over 66. 66 minus 16 is 40, so it's 40 over 66. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, we end up with 20 over 33. And uh, that is not what I have in my notes again. Is this wrong? 66 minus 6 is 60, another 10 would be 50. Oh, Jesus Christ. The bloody hell is wrong with me, I do not know. It's 50 over 66. Let's divide top and bottom by 2, we end up with 22 over 33. Or rather, 25 over 33. Let's continue here. 25, 25 over 33 is what we're getting. 25 over 33. And if the, if the answers are given to you in this form, in the fraction form, it's like this. If they're given in percentage, here, here would be a good place for, you, for them to say, what is, what, are the what is the approximate probability? And the answers are given in all percentages, in which case, they might, they might say, because they're looking for approximate here, if you divide top, if you multiply top and bottom by 3, we end up at 75 over 99, and therefore one can argue that the odds are approximately 75%. That is only in the event that the question is asking, what is the approximate probability, and the answers are all in percentages and whole numbers, then 75 is the answer, because it's approximately 75% chance that if you were to pick somebody at random, that that person will happen to be somebody who is not a female junior. Somebody, anybody, anybody at all, anybody other than uh, the girls who are juniors. What are the odds of picking one student at random who happens to be not a girl, not, not a female junior? Do you understand? And the odds of such an event is about 75%. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.